So, this month, our, our theme is intercession. I'm going to speak for just about maybe 10 minutes or 12 minutes. Um, our theme is intercession and it's intentional. It's our anniversary month and we're talking about intercession. And if you remember what I shared with us last week, it's a precursor to what I want to talk about today. Intercession is not just about, it's not just praying. You can pray for somebody and you're not interceding for them. You can pray with somebody and you're not interceding for them. Intercession is when you intervene. When you actually take their problem or the situation or whatever you're praying to God on their behalf for and make it personal. There's a lot of emotions involved in intercession. It's the type of prayer, it is type of spiritual warfare, it's type of thanksgiving, it's type of healing prayer or whatever kind of prayer you're doing that you do being part of that problem. And I mentioned briefly to you how I was interceding for somebody who had migraine and I began to have migraine too. I won't go too much into that detail now because I don't, that's not the main purpose of today's teaching. But today I want to talk to us as gatekeepers. I want to talk, but I've titled the sermon, Let the Nations Come In. You know, but maybe you could call it gatekeepers. I think as intercessors, you are gatekeepers. Intercession makes you, so you as an individual, you may look at yourself and say, you know, in my prayer life, I wouldn't say I'm an intercessor just yet. And that's okay. Because intercession is a ministry. Praying not, not, is not a ministry. Everybody ought to pray, right? But intercession is a calling. And I get that. I get that if you say, maybe I'm not, maybe that's not my priority. I do inter- I intercede for people sometimes, but most of the time, maybe that's not my priority. I get that, honestly. But as a church, praise embassy, amongst other things, we are gatekeepers to the town of Basingstoke. That's why I said to you that this exhortation today is kind of related to the purpose of spring life. And I want you to be careful what I want to say to you today. I want you to take it very seriously so that you can understand your place in praise embassy. This is not, and I don't say this with pride or anything. In fact, this is not an ordinary church. We're a church with a very, very clear and specific mandate to be the representatives of Christ in Basingstoke. First of all, and to the nations of the earth. So when we say we're a role model family, I wasn't joking. It came to me four hours of revelation. I couldn't wake up out of it. I was sweating in prayer. I just, I was in, the, I, was sleep, I was supposed to be sleeping. It was in the middle of the night. But I couldn't even get out of the bed. I wanted to break out of that revelation. And, you know, the angels just began to speak to me and says, write it down. So I, wrote, I kept writing and writing and writing. Four hours. Four hours. Just, I, I just, you know, you want to go to bed, you just say a prayer. I say, Lord, speak to me tonight. Lord, because I don't want to go to Basingstoke without you being the one leading me. That was all I prayed. I remember that was all I prayed, and I went to bed. I just went to bed. So please understand. The reason I broke down during the worship was because something, as Marco said, you are the pillar that holds this church. Something ticked in my brain. And I said, God, this work. Is too much for me. I'm too ordinary for the visions and revelations that you are giving me. There are things I cannot even tell you now. There are things that I've only said to my wife in this old church. There are things I have not yet said to my wife. Because I don't know how she's going to receive it. I'm just being honest to you. I'm waiting to, I'm looking for the right time to tell her. To say this is what God is saying. And I look at myself. I am too ordinary, too weak. Too unskilled to be fit for that kind of assignment. I'm not trying to be humble. I know myself. At least I know that bit about me. I am too unskilled. I don't have what it takes. So what broke me down was it never needed what I had anyway. It didn't need, you know, I'm just a medium. All I need to be able to always do is to turn it back over to God. So Chibu's are sorry. I am still catching visions. I'm still, I'm still catching visions. You know, because we, we, are, we are gatekeepers. I read to you First Peter chapter 2. He says, but we are not like that. We're, we're a royal priesthood. We're kings, queens, princes and priestesses. We're royal, but we are also priests. We worship the Lord. We bring worship to God.
We've been called out of darkness into God's marvelous light. We're very special people in the grand purpose of God, in his plan for this country, in his plan for the world. I believe strongly that for some reason, Praise Embassy has been called. Not because we're beautiful, better than other people, but God has his plan and purpose. And there is a portion for us to occupy. And I feel like there's a place for us in the grand scheme of God. And what you have to understand is that when you say that God wants to use you, well, let me tell you in another language, that's spiritual warfare. Every single day, that's what I go through every time. Every time we want to break into a new dimension, it's spiritual warfare. Deep spiritual encounters. Because the enemy knows what's going to come at the other end of it. Souls are going to be transformed. Lives are going to be changed. The sick will get healed. Society will get better. Values will be restored. The beauty of God's glory will be seen in the land. And the enemy doesn't like that. So he throws all his arrows. He throws all his, you know, his darts at us. Open to stop us. Open to, 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 to deter us. Open, open to discourage us. And I have so many, I have friends who are discouraged. Ministers, preachers, pastors who are discouraged, heavily discouraged already. Because the enemy has struck them. The enemy will strike their family. The enemy will do this and do that. And they know that this is a huge price to pay. I'm not going to come here today and lie to you that for every vision and revelation and instruction and guidance and direction that God gives you or God gives us as a church, that it's not going to come with warfare. It's going to come with warfare. But if we continue to maintain the conqueror mentality, we will overcome. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will overcome. We will always live in victory. Overwhelming victory is ours through Christ Jesus who loves us. Hallelujah. We've been called out to show forth God's glory in the land of the living. We've been called, we're, we're glory carriers. We're torch bearers. You know, we're in a society where people have turned, for the most part, people have turned their back on God, at least the God of the Bible. You don't understand, but as a preacher, you've got to ask yourself all the time. You, you've got to ask yourself all the time. What's going to happen after this sermon? I'm just telling you, real, keeping it real for you. Because sometimes you preach certain things from the word of God. You quote certain things. You don't even say anything. You quote it from the word of God. And there are people who are losing sleep trying to bring you down just because of that. People write all kinds of stuff about me on the internet. You probably don't see them. Because as soon as I see them, I just, I just block the person. I just delete it. I just move on. You probably don't even know. I just move on. I just move on. But there's a point where it starts affecting you. <laughs> You're human, right? So it starts affecting you. But grace always keeps us. People try to ostracize you. People try to fight you. People try to tell you in community that you don't belong in that place because, just because you're a Christian. Because you're standing firm for the name of Jesus. And that's why we have lots of Christians today. We have more Christians in society, but they would not be, they're not bold enough to say, I'm a Christian. Because they're afraid. Because they're intimidated. Because the enemy is doing over time to make sure that we are frustrated. But we will not be frustrated. We're gatekeepers. We will stand up. You know why I'm saying this to you today, of all days? Because the Bible says that the Son of Man, I've called you as a watchman. I've called you over as a watchman over the nation. A watchman is a person who stands in the lighthouse or stands on the, on the, on the, on the, on the wall of the city. The Bible says that if you, if you find a gap in the wall, you remember Pastor Femi preaching from this two, weeks, two, two Sundays ago, if you find a gap in the wall, your job as a watchman is to come down from your lighthouse and stay in the gap. You stand in the gap. That's why if you hear about people saying you stand in the gap when they're praying. You stand in the gap because there's a vacuum, there's a void. There is a vacuum and a void in society today. There's a vacuum and a void in Basingstoke stock today. There's a vacuum and a, and a void in the world today. And the only thing that can fill that vacuum and void is in the shape of God. We're going all over the world. I'm, the G7 are meeting right now in Japan. You know, we're going, it used to be G8. You know, we, you know and then they, we kick Russia out because they, they, they've, been, they've been naughty. But listen to me very carefully. The whole world is looking for peace today. Yet the Bible says Jesus is what? The Prince of Peace. And we're going everywhere else except to the Prince of Peace to look for peace. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? But look, you know Jesus. You serve Jesus. You follow Jesus. 
You are sold out to Jesus. You are a royal priest of a holy nation. A peculiar people called for to show God's glory. We are a select people. We are a rare breed of people. Every time you pop into praise embassy or any true church, listen to me, you are with rare breed of people. But we, we, are, we are like a remnant. We are supposed to be custodians of the life of Christ. So that the world, when the world has done everything, gone everywhere, and couldn't find a solution, they can come back to the word of God. They can come back to people who live their life based on the solution every day, who have the authority of Jesus in their hand, so that they, we can bring the world back to his knees in prayer, in surrender to God. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and purpose to seek my face, I will hear from heaven and I will do what? I will heal their land. You are a rare breed of people. But we've got to open the gates for the people to come in. We've got to open the gates for the people to come in. And that's where intercession comes in. To be able to open the gate, because it's risky to open the gate. Because when you're asking the people to come in, the enemy can also come in. What we did with Spring Life, for example, is opening the gates. What we've done is opening the gates. Now listen to me. When you say that you are the gatekeeper, in every town, in every community, if you're a prayerful person, you will know this. In every area, and that's why some people, when you're locate, relocating and locating yourself, you don't pray about it. I worry for you. Because when you tell me you're moving and you're not praying, I start praying. Because I'm worried for you. You know why? Because every town, every community, every city, every country you go to has its own kind of darkness. The devil always kind of, is, if you look at this, this pattern, there's always spiritual patterns to these things. And the devil kind of allocates certain demonic, I call it congestion. Like, it's like the, you just see it all over that town. And when you come as a child of God into a place, and God is giving you the instruction, and just the way he gave to praise and when we were coming to Basingstoke, and he gave us an instruction to be gatekeepers, to be example of what Christianity should be in the town. You don't understand the burden and the gravity and the enormity of that kind of assignment. If you want to do it by your own power, it will kill you. Because the enemy will come for you. Because what you're saying is, I am stepping into the enemy's territory and I'm going to take his children. He's busy feeding them with drugs. I'm going to take them and show them the joy of the Lord. He's, begin, he's busy breaking their marriages. I'm going to show them what true love is so that they can love each other, they can stay together. Uh, he's busy, you know, perverting them and causing problems for them and, and changing society to the shape of, you know, what, what, what God, to the contrast of what God planned for society. I'm going to stand up and say, this is the standards of God. This is the values of God. This is the way of, that God has shown to us to follow. And they're going to begin to trace their way back because they've tried other means. It didn't work for them. The woman with the issue of blood said, I've gone everywhere. I've spent every, all my livelihood. And then I heard that the master was in town. He's always been in town. He's always been, he's always been about. He's always been in everywhere. But she was busy going everywhere else. And we are opening the door. And we're saying, come. Come from the streets. Come. Come from the highways. Come. Come from the byways. Come. Come from everywhere. Come. And you think the devil is going to be happy. No, he's not going to be happy. But overwhelming victory is ours. What I'm trying to do with this summer today is to recruit soldiers. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to recruit you. We're going to, because I can't fight alone. And I've not been fighting alone. We just need more people. There have been people, honestly, the, gift, the greatest gift you can have in your life is the gift of people who believe in your vision. Honestly speaking, that's the greatest gift you can ever have. So I've had people. I have people now. But I'm trying to recruit you. I know some of you are tired from Friday. You slept and woke up and slept and woke up and you're still tired. Because it's emotions that have been going on. It's piled on emotion. It's not just the physical work alone. It's the mental stress. I would have loved to say to you, you're not going to be tired again. I wasn't praying. I actually don't believe that. I think you will be tired. You will be physically tired, but you will not be spiritually tired. <laughs> In Jesus' mighty. You won't, you won't even be emotionally overwhelmed. Just that you will spend so much physical energy and you need a rest. Okay? <laughs> God bless you. In Jesus' name. Intercession is a responsibility. It's a sacrifice. It's an assignment. It's a commitment. It's a ministry. I've got so many scriptures to share with you, but I'm just, you know, I'm, going to only, I'm only going to read Romans 1, 1 to 5, and I'm going to stop there. Romans 1, 1 to 5. It says, this letter is from Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, chosen by God to be an apostle and sent out to preach good news. God promised, that good, that God promised this good news long ago through his prophets 
in the Holy Scriptures. The good news is about his son. In his earthly life, he was born into King David's family, family line, and he was shown to be the son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now listen to this verse number five. Just listen carefully. And I want you to commit to something. Take time to go and study it by yourself and look at correlated to scripture. Look at other scriptures that speak about this and you, your mind will be blown. He says, through Christ, to Christ, God has given us the privilege. Now, that word privilege there is the same word as grace. Okay? If you have the New King James Version or King James Version, you will see there, it says grace. It's the same word as grace. It says, through Christ Jesus, God has given us privilege. And what? Authority. Authority is delegated power. So he's giving us his power. He's giving us grace and power as apostles to tell Gentiles everywhere what God has done for them so that they will believe and obey him, bringing glory to his name. Let me quote it for you from New King James Version. He says he has given us grace and apostleship to command obedience to the faith. He has given us grace and apostleship to command obedience to the faith. We have an apostolic assignment as a church. We have a a, a mandate that people shouldn't go to hell from basin stone. People shouldn't go and live a life without hearing about Jesus at least. People shouldn't go on every day of their life without knowing that Jesus loves them. People shouldn't go on living their lives not knowing that Jesus cares about them. People shouldn't go on living their lives. I told you, I think I've said this in church before. I met a lady and her name was Eve. I said, oh, do you know your name is the first um, name, you know, female name in the Bible? She was laughing. said, oh, stop messing about it. Stop joking. My name is not from the Bible. She doesn't even know. That's the kind of society, that's the town we live in. We have no, the people have no idea what the word of God says about them. They have no idea that God lost them. All they know about is all the arguments going on TV. Doctrinal and theological arguments that profit nothing. They don't even see the love of Jesus. They don't even see the power of Jesus. They don't even know they can be healed from a sickness. They don't even know that God loves them and cares for them. They don't even know that Jesus died for their sins. I know you have jobs to go to. I know you have homes to go to. You have things to do. You have career plans and aspirations. And I do sincerely believe that God will bring them to pass. But please, prioritize God. Prioritize the calling of God for your life, for your family. Prioritize the purposes of God concerning you. Some of us think we have time. We don't have time. We don't have time. We don't have time. We don't have time. You're so bogged down by your personal problems. And I understand that. I have problems too. But I I cannot afford to sit on my problem and let my problem weigh me down. Because if they weigh me down, then the work of God will stop. But you know God is is funny. He will raise stones, he says. If you don't do it, somebody else will do it. Oh, Jerusalem, I have posted a watchman on your walls. They will pray night and day, continually. Take no rest, all you who pray to the Lord. For us to bring the people in, for us to bring people, to, to, to get the people to Jesus, We have to pray. We have to be humble about it. We have to make sure that our doctrine is right. Our message is right. We have to watch our character. We have to do it with humility. We have to do it with humility. When God gives you this kind of mandate, you've got to be humble about it. We have to be, you know, we, 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 we have to do it out of passion for their lives. We have to do it out of passion. We must be motivated by by the passion for the souls. And we must not be distracted. We must endure to the end. We must not be distracted. Because the devil will throw a lot of distractions at us. We'll get carried away with the jamboree of events like spring life. We've got to be careful. There's a purpose to it. We've got to stay on the vision. We've got to stay on the purpose. Let me tell you something. (laughs) Chibuzo is not here. I can say it. We've only just started spring life. Where we are going? In Jesus' name. I'll close with this quote from, I was going to quote it to us last week, but there was no time. I'll I'll finish with this quote from Queen Mary of Scotland. What what she said about John Knox. She said, I feared the prayers of John Knox 
more than I feared all the armies of Scotland. I fear the preacher. John Knox is a preacher who stood, we stood her because she was, you know, leading in a very bad way and she was, you know, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And she spoke out publicly and began to speak to everybody, and began to speak to the country and to the nation. And she did all she could to bring him down. They tried to trap him, they tried to kill him, they tried nothing. And then she, came, she got to a point where she says, you know what, this, this preacher, Reverend John Knox, I'm more afraid of him praying than even soldiers coming at me to fight me. Hallelujah.